Okay, folks, High Society uh, movie, Bing Crosby. Look at my fucking hair. Bing Crosby, Frank Sinatra, Grace Kelly, Louis Armstrong as himself. All these wonderful icons in this movie. It takes place in Newport, Rhode Island. Filmed in Newport, Rhode Island, apparently. And what did I think? Well, this is the first time I've, saw, I've seen this movie. And, you know, we all kind of grow up in the footsteps of the generations before us. So people like Louis Armstrong and, and Grace Kelly and Bing Crosby were all kind of mentioned a lot, you know, by comedians and, uh, you know, Billy Crystal or whoever else. Uh, you know, you'd always hear these mentions of these things. And, um, but you don't really know what it's all about until you experience it yourself. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean, I'm getting all choked up thinking about it, but basically I can't say that I knew too much about Grace Kelly or whatever, but I mean, when she pops on the screen, uh, you know, it's like, wow, she really is quite elegant and she's quite beautiful and she's quite lovely. And uh, you start off this movie um, with this song by Louis Armstrong, kind of interesting that he's singing a song for you that kind of gets you in the mood for the movie, like he's explaining all the things that happened and, you know, he's, he's painting the, the picture of this baby face character, the good guy, Dexter, <clears throat> who was married to this woman and they got divorced. And then, um, you know, but there's some issues with this movie, to be honest with you. Um, things in this movie that would not play today, I'll go through them. First of all, I mean, it might be a controversial topic, but what they call the mystical Negro, uh, you know what I mean? And that's not my term that's been around for a while, but uh, Louis Armstrong is kind of like this, you know, just just happy to be there, smiling, singing. You don't see any uh, African-American people at this high society event unless they're the entertainers, you know what I mean? So that's just, but it's probably very typical of the time period of New England, Newport, Rhode Island. Uh, I mean, the people don't know that the state of Rhode Island is officially titled the state of Rhode Island and Providence Plantations. I mean, that's still the name of the state to this very day, as far as I know. So um, we've we've heard that commentary that, you know, a lot of times black people were uh, not approved of unless they were the entertainment, unless they were the entertainment. So that holds up. And Louie. I can see why people, you know, I've always heard about Louis Armstrong and I've seen him blowing his horn and all that shit. And you can see he's a great entertainer, but I mean, he does, you know, kind of fall into this thing where what's Louis's motivations in life? What's Louis's uh, hopes and dreams? And who's he fucking? Instead, he's just singing about these guys. Now here, here we go. First of all, another thing that's in this movie that's kind of, you know, perceptions change and people change and times change but the way that um you know i guess the former uh, it's weird because the former husband uh, bing crosby plays dexter and he's basically the favorite of uh, grace kelly's character's uh, little sister now i thought it was actually grace kelly's character's uh daughter uh, uh, but it's not, it's, it's, it's her little sister by 20 years or something. So she's got this little sister who, who likes to comment on her older sister's love life and all her husbands and all this crap. And, uh, the little sister kind of has a crush on her former brother-in-law, but of course the girl's like 10 or 12 and, and Crosby's, you know, 45 or 50 and they have this little moment where they're sitting outside and they're trying to plot against the, the new wedding of Grace Kelly's character. And basically, uh, they're sitting there and um, Grace Kelly says, will you marry uh, the little girl, sorry, the 12 year old girl, the former sister-in-law of Bing Crosby says to Bing, uh, to Dexter, will you marry again, Dexter? And Dexter says, I'm just waiting for you to be old enough. Then the little girl gets all hot and fucking bothered, okay? It's like she goes through fucking puberty right in front of us. And and Bing, you know, the character of Dexter starts singing her a fucking song, Little One. Now look, you know, back then, innocence and, and all that good stuff, pro probably nobody batted a fucking eye. 
it was just like a cute little thing like, oh, the girl's got a little crush on this older guy. Uh, they used to be brother and sister-in-law and now they're not. But uh, but at the end of the song, she runs off and, and proclaims, I, I consider us engaged. Now, in my fucking mind, I thought that this was going to be like a running storyline of the film from that point. I thought we were going to see like the little girl make a fuss about it, but she didn't, you know, so that's probably for the best. Uh, but just the fact that he's singing a song, like kind of an ode to this young girl, uh, that wouldn't be filmed these days. You know what I mean? Back then, like I said, people's perception, it was a more innocent time, you know, except for all the public lynchings of people. Uh, but a more innocent time back then, I guess, that they didn't think about such perversions and so forth. If you try to put that song in a movie these days, it wouldn't fly. Now we go to my main issue with this fucking movie, and I'll be honest, what it, what it brought back to me was this past summer's topic, the debate of um, missing white woman syndrome. Now hear me out on this, folks. You're saying, Mike, there's no missing woman in this movie, High Society. Where are you going with this? Well, just the fact that the whole world, you know, got all upset about this young uh, Gabby Petito, God rest her soul, and the horrible things that she experienced at the end of her life with this jerk of a boyfriend who ended up killing her. But the whole world screeched in its collective halt uh, footsteps to pay attention to this situation. Meanwhile, the indigenous women that nobody cares about, uh, African-American women get, get fucking killed and missing. There's missing children of all ethnicities and types, and nobody really gives a flying fuck. You know what I mean? You get the Amber Alert on your phone. You get a, you get annoyed by it. You don't, do they even put kids on milk cartons anymore? My hair is doing weird things today. Um, but in this movie, uh, all these guys, you know, Dexter, the former husband, uh, the new guy who wants to marry her, and it's they keep saying he's like of a lower class, so I didn't quite get that. Are uh, they saying that he's poor, and somehow he's marrying her? And I, I didn't quite get that. But all these things, um, uh, they're all revolving around her. And even Frank Sinatra gets some action. And then they, they all praise, like the whole point of the movie is uh, she, Grace Kelly's character, I can't remember the name, She'd be a wonderful person. She's so beautiful. She's so great. But if she just had a heart, like she's the fucking uh, Tin Man or something, like she has no emotions. She's too unforgiving with people, blah, blah, blah. She's the perfect porcelain doll, right? So, uh, but she has to slum it out. And I guess what happens is she's got her ex-husband pining over her played by Bing, she's got her current uh, engagee husband, you know, fiancé husband, pining over her. And then she ends up with this weird little situation with Mike, uh, is the character's name, who's a reporter. And apparently he could have had his way with her because she's all drunk, he's all drunk. They have a couple of kisses on the mouth, and then they go swimming in the pool, and Mike could have done whatever he wanted with her, but he, he, he was a gentleman. And he did not take advantage of a drunk woman. So he gets a shining star. And then when that's all revealed that she did not lose her virtue to Mike, uh, she says, well, why not? What's wrong with me? You know, typical. I mean, it's just so absurd. So the point I'm trying to fucking make is after all this shit that we go through with this crazy broad, um, because she's so goddamn beautiful, um... You know, she talks herself, she talks her way out of getting married to the new guy. And then she marries the old guy, fucking Bing. You know what I mean? So, but of course he jumps right up. And the, the basic point that I'm getting at is all these fucking characters, the little sister, the three men, all these wedding guests, the reporters, they're all revolving around this bitch because she's hot. She's, a, she's an extremely attractive, uh, well cheekbone defined white woman. So everyone's going to stop what they're doing and consider her. Everyone's going to stop what they're fucking doing and revolve their asses around her life. And uh, every guy's going to fucking sing a song for her, literally in this fucking movie. And everybody's going to propose marriage to her. And everyone's going to excuse her for her ailments and her drunkenness. And, and it's just, it's kind of deplorable. 
Like, at the same time I'm watching this movie, I'm thinking, yes, these are icons everywhere you go. Louis Armstrong is an icon. Bing, Frank, you know what I mean? Seeing those two guys together, Bing and Frank. And uh, Grace Kelly, who became the Queen of Monaco, you know, Princess Grace of Monaco. She left, she left being a Hollywood starlet to be a fucking princess, so good for her. But the point is... Uh, we're supposed to sit here and just watch this character. The whole world revolves around her. And all these guys are just willing to, to let her be a fucking whore and all this goddamn shit just because she's a good-looking white woman. So um, it just it, it angers me, I guess. I mean, but, but we all just fucking accept it. We all just fucking watch it. Now, uh, as far as Newport, Rhode Island goes, which I've been in many times... There's still whites-only fucking clubs uh, there, as far as I've heard, which, you know, the news won't tell you that, but you can dig it up on YouTube. Uh, it's it's not this fucking wonderful place. Um, but the shrubbery, I mean, that's one thing you can say about fucking Newport is the fucking bushes and the shrubs and all that goddamn shit, if you're into it, which I'm not. I mean, I can say, yes, the grass looks nice, but who gives a fuck? You know what I mean? So the, God, there's always people around me. So anyway, that's my Mike's High Society Instant Movie Review. I reviewed the movie. That's how I feel about it. Uh, goodbye.